Hello everyone, welcome back, thanks for tuning in, as usual find me Facebook, YouTube, One Way and BitChute. Today we're continuing our series, our series of assessing whether the Bible actually has contradictions in it or not. Today we are on the contradiction number 11 and contradiction number 11 is as follows, is as follows. Who was Achan's father? And yes, just as a reminder, in case you haven't been following all of them, I can count, but because one of the questions up here was repeated, number seven and um, and number nine were are repeated, right? So therefore, so I obviously didn't do the same video twice. So um, I'm then. So we're always a number. Be we're always a number sort of behind. Uh, than what it actually is okay so anyway who was Achan's father is the question is the question that we need to answer today who was his father do we have a contradiction in this particular instance now as always we establish the following in Timothy it talks about what the Bible is for it is for doctrine reproof correction etc um, and is designed to be a document that has religious intentions and has got religious teachings and doctrinal, it deals with doctrinal issues so that a person, and it says unto good works for the person to be, to be able to have a, sort of a source of meditation and ethics and so on and so forth so that they can, unto good works, so they, they can be decent people, good people, uh, godly people, right? Um, and that is basically the issue so the bible is there to help you to be less of a, a of a of a blight on society as it were and obviously this the <laughs> reading the bible doesn't help everyone <laughs> to that end uh, some people take uh, take their religion as an excuse to be obnoxious and irritating and so on and so forth um which is not the intention obviously um, well, not obviously, because, you know, these things aren't necessarily always obvious. <coughs> Pardon me. I'm, I'm still trying to get over this stupid uh, bronchitis. The itch is still there. I'm fine, but the itch is there. Anyway, so we're going to proceed. Who is Aiken's father? So it gives us all the necessary references. Let us go directly to the references, and I'm pretty sure you're going to notice the issue very quickly, right? Ladies and gentlemen, you all need to understand something, right? Just just so you know, um, just so that you understand, to put this whole thing into context, right? Where these atheists go out and they really dump all over Christians on this issue of biblical infallibility, etc., etc. First of all, when going through these, you can understand uh, the first thing is that the atheists have absolutely no idea what we mean by biblical infallibility and so on and so forth. They do not understand. They've got no idea what the Bible is, its intended use is. And third of all, they're either, they're either completely illiterate, they're completely stupid, um, or, uh, uh, or if they're intelligent, then, then their intelligence takes leave of them whilst assessing the bible because it's literally it's not taking me more than a few minutes to go through through each particular instance and figure it out it's 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 literally and this might be because i'm at this point now i haven't always been a christian i'm now accustomed to reading and assessing the bible and i have a a feel for how the people are going about their business but um yeah, it's not taking me very long at all. So this is not you don't need to be a genius So you can so you can only assess that either these people are it's just it's just Stupidity or bigotry or I don't know what it is that's coming through that if they can't figure this out Let's put it this way if an atheist if an atheist cannot figure out these Bible contradictions, right? I'm no one special, all right? So I'm no one special, and I can I literally not even five minutes to figure to figure most of them out, okay? Except some of the genealogical ones can be a little bit more complicated. You've got to make sure <coughs> you've got all your ducks in a row, right? Someone like me, I'm just Joe Soap, you know, 
I can figure it out in like a few minutes, right? Five minutes, okay? These idiots can't figure it out. <laughs> and now they want to tell you about what the nature of reality is. It's like, yeah, okay, keep keep dreaming, okay? So, ladies and gentlemen, you know, if, if you're a Christian and some one of these guys comes up to you, that's why I'm doing this, okay? That's why I'm doing this. It's a point of reference to help you. So if some atheist says to you, oh, contradiction over here, you can say, watch this video, okay? It saves you the trouble and the headache and and the, 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 the ache of having to, to, to go through this absolute mindless nonsense um and uh, uh it helps it helps a christian understand that the nature of who they're dealing with right the nature of who they're dealing with because you can literally once you've understood all of these issues and an atheist comes to you and says oh well the bible's full of contradictions you can ask him two questions say hey have you actually read the bible yes or no have you actually studied it in order to know whether they're really there or not or are you saying that just because you heard it from somewhere else? Depending on their answer, you can either then you can then either if they say, I have read it, I have studied it, and I still believe there are contradictions, then you can move on to the second question. If they say, No, no, I've just heard about it, then you can say, Well, then you're a moron. You're trying to arguing you're trying to argue with me about something you haven't even read. All right? Yeah, and you tell me that the only reason I believe what I believe is because my pastor told me and yet you over here trying to have a fight with me because not because you've investigated but because you've just heard it from someone else and you just swallowed it with hook line and sinker because it suits you so that it will immediately tell you about the character of the individual you're dealing with and so you can just not even waste your time with just tell the person to get lost on the spot right um i mean you can maybe be a little bit more generous and say and look at them and say listen do you really actually want to know whether there's contract, because if you want, I can sit down with you and I can go through these things. Or here's a video if you are actually interested and there we go. And the person might be amenable to that. Who knows? I mean, in the context, you can tell. But generally speaking, if the person hasn't bothered to even go and check for themselves, you can tell them to get lost. They're just being stupid. They want to waste your time, right? If they say, yes, I have studied it, I have read it, and I still think there's contradictions, then being able to see, right? Being able to see how absolutely, ridiculously, absurdly easy it is to resolve these issues. Then you know straight away that the person that you're dealing with, right, is, is either an idiot, right, in which case feel sorry for them, and maybe sort of sit down and explain, or is just so outright, and then, or you know their character straight away, that even though they studied it, it's through... Uh, they studied it in order to just, there's a confirmation bias there kind of thing, right? And and uh, this person is trying to, you know, the person's trying to tell you that you read it with confirmation bias because you're a Christian. Or you, the only reason you believe this is great is because it's confirmation bias. But then you can easily, it's like, listen, mate, right? It's so easy to resolve these things that the one with confirmation bias is actually you, okay? You're the one that's prejudiced. You're the one that's that's biased sort of thing because l literally any halfwit on the street can actually resolve these kinds of things. So that sort of helps you out in that way. Anyway, I've waffled enough. Let's get let's get stuck into it. So it says, yeah, and Joshua and all Israel with him took Achan, the son of Zerah, and the silver and the garment and the wedge of gold and his sons and daughters, oxen, asses, sheep and his tent and all that he had and brought them unto the valley of Achor. Achor. Right. So it seems like Achan is the son of Zerah. But now here's one thing we need to understand. <coughs> one thing we need to understand about the word son and the word father, right, is that the word son and father are not specific words. They can be very, very general words. So again, you've got, we've, if I take you back to one of the other videos, we've got something called semantic range. Semantic range means that this word can have more than one meaning. So when you say son, it can actually be your biological offspring, or it can be someone you have charge of, of or it can be someone who is a biological descendant of yours. So your son's 
and so on and so forth. You're so all your grand, so that includes your grandchildren yourself, and conversely with the father. So, for example, the Americans are very familiar with the concept of saying our founding fathers. Does that mean that the founding fathers are biologically responsible for every living person in the United States? No, it does not mean that. But fathers, they're those who established and generated us our forefathers okay so semantic range doesn't make biological like immediate father or son relationship the word does not make it necessary it's the context that makes it necessary and the reckoning all right so when we look here at the first one <coughs> pardon me son of zera so it could mean it's either his direct biological son or it could mean that he is it's merely referring to him as a descendant of Zerah, whereas Zerah is a forefather. So Zerah could be a father, could be a grandfather or a great grandfather, or even the, the head of his particular family, right? Because we know in those days uh the you have the tribes. Achan specifically was from the tribe of Judah, and Zach and my or Zerah might have been one of the might have been the head of of one of the families that established so you know but we'll see we're gonna see what's happening right did not Akan the son of Zerah commit a trespass da 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 all right so there we go again and that man no 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 all right so there we go again son of Zerah right then we have in Joshua 7 verse 1 it says yeah but the children of Israel committed a trespass in the accursed thing for Akan the son of Kami the son of Zabdi the son of Zerah Aha! So here it's giving you a genealogy. It means, quite simply, if you take this text, it means quite simply that Akan's direct biological, direct biological father is Kami, right? And then Zabdi is his grandfather and Zera is his great grandfather, right? So basically, Zakan is two is is the third generation from Zera. It's that simple, right? So. Why does it? Why? Why do they think Zerah is important, of the tribe of Judah? All right. So basically, in those days, so for example, let's have a, let's let's make an example. These days we have surnames, okay, Smith, Lopez, whatever the case might be, right? And that that is the name of your forefathers, right? You are of this tribe, or you know, or you have this the Richardson, right, the patriarch somewhere along the line was Richardson and now you are Mark Richardson or Anthony Richardson the son of you know you're not nice you're not nice and you might not you know so your surname is not necessarily doesn't reflect your father's name but it reflects the name of the original patriarch that founded or established this particular family or this particular tribe it's a no-brainer we still use it today and all these kinds of things and in those days in Israel which tribe you belong to was sometimes, depending on the context and how they were trying to refer to you, was more important. And your family, right? Your not only a tribe, but your family within that tribe, because a tribe was basically a collection of different families, right? Was more important, right? Your lineage was more important than who your direct father or mother necessarily were. So it might it seems that this is the case, right? And it's not a contradiction. They know very well what they're talking about, right? In the reckoning of these people. And even if we go to this, uh, to another verse, right? Let's go to this one here, right? And so we've got a whole issue over here that there was a big sin committed and some people got punished. And it's talking, uh, and it talks here. You hear, you see here, right? The sons of Simeon of their families, of Nemuel, of the family of the Nemuelites. So we can see here, right? Nemuel, Nemuelites, right? So it's exactly the same as saying Richardson, right? Nemuelites is named after the patriarch of the family. Again, Jamin of the Jamanites, Jackin of the family of the Jackanites. And here we go, Zara, the family of the Zarhites, all right? And so on and so forth. And these were the these were the families, right? Zerah was one of the families who established uh, the, 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 the tribe of Judah, right? If we go here, uh, these are the sons. No? Okay, so we're looking for this one here. So there is that one we've just read. 
no that's not what the, that's not relevant that's a different person entirely <coughs> here we go and let's go here to numbers 20 right numbers 20 they were very interested in the sons of judah all right so here we go the sons of judah after their families were of Shela, the family of the Shelanites, of Phares, the family of the Pharisites, of Zerah, the family of the Zarhites. So, the reason why, uh, uh, so the reason why Zerah is mentioned as the most prominent one, as the forefather, is because in this, if you if you take the background information of what is going on in this particular incident, it the uh, the Israel had apostatized. Moses went up, and all all the different families had apostatized. And there was a big issue, and there was, uh, 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 how can you say? And then there was obviously certain divisions. Some tribes had sinned, some tribes had not sinned, and then there was a bit of a sorting out of things going on there. And so, your at this particular instance, your lineage became very important in terms of sorting you out, or even in in a sense where. Let's say you go and you can and and you commit because it says over here that um that he had committed a, a trespass in a certain accursed thing. So it's almost like if so for example, if we take a contemporary uh view, right, and we look at the Japanese, the Japanese are very interested in honor. So well, you go you, you when you do something idiotic, you dishonor not only yourself, but your entire family, right? And so it's kind of the same thing here where the son of Zerah, it's like here's Zerah. He's this guy who was, he's a, he's a patriarch of Israel, who was one of the founding sort of families and stuff like that. And here's this guy, the son of this righteous man, and he's, he's brought disgrace on his family and so on and so forth. And, and that's where these kinds of links are because the, all the family ties and your ancestry and all these kinds of things are very, very important for these guys. So that is pretty much it ladies and gentlemen that is it it's that simple it's that simple it's that easy you know <coughs> it goes on to give you it just it goes on to give you the 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 for anyone that's like really confused right it goes it goes and it says it tells you the son of kami son of zebdi of zabdi the son of zera of the tribe of judah so it's you know it gives you for for clarification's sake it gives you the genealogy over there and it's that it's that simple man it's that simple it's not it's not particularly complicated not complicated at all it is not it is not a contradiction right nonsense not a contradiction so that being said ladies and gentlemen i thank you for your viewership and your attention and I bid you a farewell and a cheerio and a God bless and I'll see you next time.